come down here and put your nose to the grind and, uh, and become a better quarterback. Because we're going to coach you and we're going to coach you hard. It's not, it's not cut for everybody. They get all the hype, they get all the, the blame. I'm going to coach some of the guys a little bit harder. I'm going to have to coach better, it looks to me like. Fall in and get loose, we're going to get it on. Balance, rhythm, tempo, eyes. If you want to play this position now, get, get used to be putting in the spot. I'll be honest with you, I'll let you see how much they improve over a week's time. Saddlebrook Resort and Spa in Tampa is home to some of the nation's finest golf courses, most renowned tennis courts, and for one week in June, some of the country's top high school quarterbacks. Calling the shots at this elite camp is highly recognized quarterback coach Joe Dickinson. We train quarterbacks all over the country. This is, this is our camp that we call the elite quarterback camp here at Saddlebrook Resort, and this is where our camp started. This is where I first took over this part of the business and uh, we've been coming here at least two or three times a year uh, for the last three years. Now this is our third, third season here. Dickinson has made a career of developing quarterbacks, serving on the coaching staffs at Tulsa, Marshall, Northern Illinois, Tulane, and as the offensive coordinator at Oklahoma, where he reached his ultimate goal in 1985 with a national championship under head coach Barry Switzer. This has been a really good profession for me. You know, football's basically taken care of my family for the last 27, 28 years and is continuing to do so. But uh, I was lucky to be able to be the offensive coordinator at, at four really good spots in, in, in the country. Equally as impressive as his resume, it's Coach Dickinson's list of pupils. Gus Farratt was at Tulsa as a young freshman. You know, when I was there as a, as a position coach, you know, I had Troy Aikman as a, he was my scout team quarterback the, my first tenure at Oklahoma. You know, th those are the type of people, you know, I've had worked with Bubby Brister. You know, Bubby played in the league forever. I've had, we've, I've picked all those guys' brains and worked with them and stuff. We've had a lot of guys. I mean, J.P. Lossman, a first round draft choice. Patrick Ramsey, a first round draft choice. You know, those kids, you've been around those first picks in the draft, first round draft choices gives you a good indication or a good barrier, you know, a good measuring stick of where a kid can be or what and not. And you know, in these camps, we've had Matt Barkley. Matt Barkley, first met Matt, Matt Barkley when he was going to be a freshman at, you know, at uh, Modern Day. And uh, you knew right then he was going to be special. Special kid, special player. You know, we, we've seen them all. June 19, 2011 marks the beginning of the newest class of elite high school quarterbacks. What's your name, Hoss? You Michael? Yeah. All right, nice Michael, what's going on, man? Good, nice to meet you. So you're going to Chesser? Mm -hmm. You ready to get it going? Definitely. We'll get you going. We'll see what you got tomorrow. You, your dad told me you're a runner, too. Yeah. You tough as your old man? He was a tough <laughs> now. He was. He was a tough dude, man. He played back in the day when them dudes took everybody's money. Well, that's right. good. Good, good Michael, good. Well, I'm you. glad you came, dude. Thanks for having me. This is just different than tennis. This is just different than golf. It just is, okay? Th this, is, this is hard work. Do what you're told to do. You came down here to be a better quarterback. You know, so many guys come down here and they stay up till 11 or 12 and they come out of the next day and they can't, they can't really perform the way they want to and they'll call me up on the phone and go, hey, hey, Coach D, can you talk to the coach at Colorado? Yeah, I'll talk to him. I'll tell him don't take your if you want to be somebody that we can recommend and stuff, come down here and put your nose to the grind and, uh, and become a better quarterback. Make your noise on the field because we're going to coach you and we're going to coach you hard and that brings me to the point. Joe McCulley, Joe's here to help me coach the quarterbacks. Joe led the nation in passing at Tulsa University. Known Joe forever and right beside him is Paulette. Paulette's really good at what she does. I think one of the most important things about a quarterback is he understands where his central balance is, using his core muscles and all that stuff. He understands that you're going to get hit in that game, so you got to get used to getting a little tougher. And some of the stuff she does makes you tougher. Some of the kids that's been here before, some of the kids don't know. that they haven't been here, they don't know how much better they're going to get in about five days. We're, we're going to train them. We're going to continually technique them to death. We're going to go over some things that I've learned from some really good quarterbacks, really good quarterback coaches, and learn from some guys like Joe Montana. 
I'll be honest with you, I'll let you see how much they improve over a week's time. It's, uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to change basically how they look as a quarterback, how they think as a quarterback, and how they look as a quarterback in one week. Right up here, let's go. Let's go. Bring your ball. Set it down. Set it back here on the white. Bring your football and set it on white. I'll be honest with you. I, I told you we're going to stretch it at uh, 930. It's 930. Here's the deal. I, I don't know that I would throw before then, fellas. Some of you already thrown 30 or 40 balls. You ought to get your hips and your core and all that stuff loose before you throw. Right or wrong, Paulette? I mean, the arm is, man, you, unless you can throw really good with both arms, you got to save the, the arm you throw with. That's what I talked to you about. Now, I'm not going to beat you up about it and all that stuff, but I'm just telling you for your own good, don't come up to me on Thursday and go, boy, coach, my arm kills me when you took 800 other throws in the mornings before we got ready or in the afternoons. You, this practice when we practice, right? Because we're going we're gonna to get it on and we're going to throw a lot. And I know that's what, what throwers do, right? That's what we do. We throw. But let's be smart about it. Got all that pretty boy stuff on like you good. You better show me something. <laughs> Start us off, boys. You know what we're gonna do? Just pat it and let's go. Pat it and let's go. Let's get, let's get loose. This is how you're supposed to get loose, man. Find you a target, throw at it, and let the guy get to there. Don't, don't watch the ball all in the air. Don't make any sense unless you got a shotgun in your hand you can hit it and shoot it with. You over grip it. Feel it? I mean, when you, we have no tension. The tension in your grip kills it. It's like choking a golf club to death. You can't get it to go or you can't get it to release. The same way with your football. You, you, don't, you, wanna, you wanna get it to release. You wanna take a six inch step when your left foot goes in the air. Pretty good, man. Pretty good. Relax. See, here's, here's what I want you guys to be able to do. So you, guys, you guys listen up. You gotta, you gotta be able to throw in front of a crowd because when you get to a college, four other dudes are sitting there looking at you on the same scholarship you're on going, that guy ain't getting my job. So you gotta be able to perform in a crowd. You know, I've always wondered how those guys hitting that ball down the middle of the fairway and then they go over and then they hit, they hit it and it doesn't go in the middle and they got all these people standing all around them that can hit for all that money. Well, they, they get used to playing in front of a crowd. As a quarterback, you gotta get used to people looking at you and watching you, all right? One more time, one more time. Relax, get your left foot on the ground faster. Your drop is nice and quick. All right, you took three. Let's see if you can go five. Y'all ever go five at wire, wire grass? Let's try it though. You're gonna go do a, con what are you gonna be, a junior next year? All right, you're gonna, you're gonna try to go to the underarm combine? They're gonna make you do five step drops. Let's, let's be ready. All right, come on. Just, it's just one more, one more crossover and one more step. It's as simple as that. Don't let it mess with you. All right, pretty good ball. Next guy, who hadn't been? Let's go. A lot of it's anxiety. Taking your hand off the ball, patting the ball, move, shaking the ball, all that's anxiety. You know, we just calm that down through the deal, but uh, really impressed with the kid from Dr. Phillips. Really gets it out of his hand fast. But, you know, it's, it's a long week. We'll see what he does when we got guys rushing him and, Throwing and you know, but I but I bet he's pretty good. I bet there's a reason why they, they offered him, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I bet it is. My name is Nick Patty. I'm a quarterback at Dr. Phillips High School in Orlando, coming to you from the DeBartolo Sports University. I think every athlete, at some point, you just strive to get better. Um, the desire is every time you step on the field or the weight room, you try to take something out of it, if that's one thing or ten things. But you know, my desire is to get better as a quarterback, and um, that's why I'm here. Nick's a big time football player. Nick Patty's a big time. If you're gonna say hey, that, that's the best guy, but the, the old kids, he, I mean, he's, he's, he's by far ahead. I mean, you know, he's had his own coach. I mean, Tom Shawnos guy has done a great job with him. You know, you look back at a game like that, and we were so good all year and so dominant, and look back at a game like that, it was so difficult. There's little things, of course, I picked up. I only threw two picks all last year, and I threw two in the state game alone. And it's just little things like that. Like, you know, you always look back, maybe if I didn't throw that, maybe if I didn't do that. 
course, there's things you can change, but you know, we'll see. We have a whole new, whole new defense this year. A lot more different offensive guys. So it'll be, it'll definitely be a change for us. Every time I go on the field, there's someone taller. Every time I go to a camp, there's someone taller. And you know, I just want to prove to everyone that they're not always better, and they're not. So, and I know that, and I have confidence in myself at 5'11", and I, I work my game and try to take pride in my game to know that I do the stuff at 5'11", that people do at 6'4 and 6'5", and I do some stuff better that the guys at 6'4 and 6'5 do. This is life, football's life for me. And uh, you know, I think the more guys you see and ask that question to, it's the difference. You know, it's who wants to be on the beach or who wants to be playing football? That's kind of the thing, and I'd rather be here. I'm going to coach some of the guys a little bit harder. I'm going to have to coach better, it looks to me like. Mm -hmm. Really doing it. I mean, numerous ones. I mean, I can name the names, and, but I'm going to give them till tomorrow evening, and I'm going to just kind of call them up on it and make sure that they've they're really got their money's worth for coming here. Now I'm going to take the smaller kids now. I'm going to. And, and work with him. I just, just want to see what these kids look like so that we can coach from here. You know, after that, then they'll have some ideas of what we're asking them to do with the front shoulder, with the eyes, the left foot, and then we can start getting through some real skills on this deal. All right, let's go again, Dodge City. Let's go. Come on. Let's go get in here. Let's everybody watch him. I want to watch you throw. Pretty good. Put your eyes on that patch. I want to try to hit that patch every time. Let's go, Nashville. Come on. Better. All right. See, here's the deal. Even as a young guy, habits are hard to break. Here. He started with it right here. I guarantee it's on that camera. He turns it to right there. Now, you're going to load it. You're going to load it from right there. It's going to be loaded right here. Then we're going to come for arc right there. All right. So. This right here, it's tension, this is not. You gotta be, everything you gotta do has gotta be quick. The more tension you have, it's just load it, throw it. It's a good release, it's good with your eyes. There you go. You've been listening, haven't you? See the nose of that ball out there? Get that nose down. All right, let's keep going, let's go. What are we doing, are we, are we tired over here? Come on, let's go. Come on, I want them good though. Come on, hands all the way out, all the way out. I'm Paulette New. I am the core strengthening coach. I uh, have my certification in uh, National Academy of Sports Medicine. Come on, get that jumping jack in. We want to go ahead and show them the core stabilizations and so on that they can actually put all their strength and uh, the stability and everything I teach them on that ball that they can apply it onto the field. You have three sets of those, three sets of those. Come on, you got three sets in you. By the time it's the end of the week, they're going to have so much better balance. Their core strength is going to be so much better. All the way down, butt down, come on. There you go. Abs tight, core tight. When they go back to their camp school next year, it's going to be a piece of cake. It's going to be a walk in the park. Breathe. There you go, good, good, good. Awesome, guys, go get a drink, go get a drink. I think one thing you got to understand about a hitch throw is this. Unless it's the comeback, you're probably reading the defenses then hitching the throw, because otherwise you'd just be throwing it on rhythm. So I seven and I'll tell you when. Stay taller, throw. I said hitch. Noticeable? Here we go. I said hitch. I shouldn't have to repeat that. So here's the deal. If the coach tells you to hit, you better be hitching. Your you, you tail better be hitching. You know what I'm saying? Because he doesn't have time to have to coach you over little fights. He wants a guy that quarterback that does what he's told to do in the huddle every play, because you're the quarterback. So who's up? I want it with seven, freeze, hit. All right, here we go. Ready? Go. Step tall, throw. Just like that. That's all I want to see done. Make a play on Friday night. This isn't by the book. This is, get it to him right now, just like that. Who's the guy that can make that throw? The guy I want on Friday night yeah. for me. I'm impressed with a couple of you new guys, man, for sure. You gotta learn the basics. You gotta make basic throws. You guys wear your gear. All right? Let's get a breakdown right here. Let's get a breakdown. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Let's do something cool. Two more. Got three. One, two, three. Two more. Okay, guys. Yeah. 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 Ready? Let's go. There you go. Punch, 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 punch. Knees up. Knees up. 
Uh, my name is Jason Riley, uh, Director of Sports Performance here at uh, Saddleburg Resort uh, Athletes Compound. These kids are getting the ultimate program, really. Uh, you know, I think that we look at everything from how they're moving, uh, what kind of changes and patterns that we can uh, really create. So we're looking at all these different things in terms of their movement patterns and trying to create those patterns so that they can have a more productive career uh, without whatever their genetic potential is. Go! Come on, punch, 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 punch me. Stay facing me, stay square. Shoulder, stay square. And relax. We have quite a, a good list here, uh, football-wise. You know, we have Dustin Keller, who is you know, one of the top guys, uh, tight end out of uh, Purdue. Did great at the combine. Uh, Cedric Ellis, who's a D tackle out of you know, New Orleans. Uh, baseball side, we've had Derek Jeter, Ryan Howard, uh, you know, some, some pretty good guys. And now we have John Isner training here with us with tennis. So we're gonna take a five step drop. You're gonna be pushing inside, outside edge. So just like you guys did in that bullet belt. Okay, so now we're pushing back through this way. You're looking at the wall, just like you're looking downfield. Okay, once you get set, all we want you guys to do is get into a good stance and you're comfortable right here so that belt's not pulling you forward. Okay, we don't want you to be off balance where it's pulling you. You gotta take or steps coming back in. You get set and you're ready to throw right through here. So much of the movement that a quarterback does is you know, lateral movement. I mean, they're, they're doing a drop out of the quarterback, I mean out of the quarterback position, but the mechanics of it are lateral. Um, so what we tried to do was create more of a lateral edge push off of the feet. At the same time, creating power, you know, using the things like the bungee. Stay balanced, good, and relax. Go ahead, partner, switch. Well, I think it's the education process. Uh, really, that's what it comes down to is, you know, a week you only have, you know, so much time to change mechanics, but we're trying to educate them for the future. So if they come back in the future, they're one step further than the people that haven't been here, uh, providing them a framework for when they do leave, they go off to their school, things that they can work with. Uh, and that's not only with you know, footwork, but it's recovery generation, uh, you know, different uh, strength and conditioning protocols, you know, weak rotator cuff, what can I do to increase my rotator cuff strength so it doesn't get injured. Uh, so providing that educational component around it that uh, is really going to benefit them in the long run. Move your toes around, pick your feet up, let that water get underneath the bottoms of your feet. We got 15 seconds, 15 seconds. God. Dude. Keep moving around, fellas. That workout was uh, very, uh, very intensive, if that's the right word. I don't know. That was a lot of work and uh, really got to you. That's the hardest part right there, though. I, I felt like my feet were about to fall off. With a morning session complete, the night session brings new challenges for the campers, plus a few new faces. I'll get down. The dog of Aug is in the house. The dog, man. The Augie dog. I'm Augie DiBiase. I play quarterback and I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. Best eighth grader in America, bar none. He, he can do it all. He's uh, probably gonna be a little bit of nervous out here throwing with these older guys, and I, that's how I want him. I can continually always wanna push him to the where he's not in the comfort zone, so he's got to continue to improve. I'm used to playing against bigger kids, and, uh, but it's always good to have uh, better competition and to, so you can try to be compare yourself to older kids. I look at um, Tim Tebow, he's a great leader, and uh, Ben Roethlisberger, he's a great competitor, and uh, also Aaron Rodgers, both you know, a great competitor and a great quarterback. I think that I'll, I have a pretty good size, but I also think that I work really hard and I have great coaching and God's on my side too, so that always helps a lot. Fall in, get loose, we're gonna get it on. I like it, wiregrass football. Get some reeds and some seven on down here, man. Let's go. That's the guys we're playing tonight right there. They're bringing them in on the bus. Like the longest yard. Relax that hand. Michael, you really good with your throw hand. I think your other hand has too much tension, too much grip down in the palm. Lighten that hand up on the front of the ball. Little Dodge City, where you going, baby? You gonna try to hand it to him? Short step. Hey, go. Cade, what's this up here, man? That ball down here. Remember that bow in your back? We got rid of that once. Let's don't have to get rid of it again, okay? Go to a good spot for me. <laughs> There you go. The guy way outside coming at you. Here he comes. 
That's what I want to see right there. Got to put it on. Nice read. See, here's the deal. We just had a chance at a touchdown. You threw it in the grandstand. Got to hit him. Got to hit him. All right, here it is. Get your eyes on him. There he comes. Drive him. Good. That's it. Nice decision. Keep it down there. Relax. Here they come. There he is. Pop. That's it. All right, good. I think there's a lot of talent here. I think they got to take all the coaching in. Some of the younger kids, you know, or we, we threw them out there to not see what they did, and then they were doing the same things when they got here this morning. Uh, to me, that's either I'm not doing my job or they're just not listening. We got to continue to work. I mean, we got to continue to get better every day. I don't think I didn't think we improved that much tonight mm -hmm. from this morning. What we're trying to do is slow the game down for you a little bit. So you don't, you can go out there and not think about, oh, I got to keep my left shoulder open. I got to not overstride. I got to play with my eyes up. All those things got to be automatic. I got to play under control. I got to anticipate. All right, how do you know what to anticipate if you don't know what coverage they're in? It's very important for you to know more about defense than it really is to know more about your offense. Here's one of the things I try to tell people. And it's, and it's kind of stupid. But it's very true. The only reason a quarterback looks down on the football field is to make sure his center has his pants on. That's it. The sound and the strong safety are married. Okay? That's how you find them all. That's how you identify the defense. If that's a strong, that's a Sam. And it, the guy in the middle between the Sam and the Willie's who? Mike. Mike. It's a simple game. It's a simple game. What happens if you make a mistake? and you throw a pick or you, you, you do the wrong thing. What, what? Next play. What the hell are you gonna do about the last play? Except learn from it and go do it. Next play. You wanna play this position now, get, you, get used to be putting it in the spot. That's the deal. You, go, you know, here's the deal. You roll up in here, you, you know, you're on the spot, right? You roll up in here, man. People start putting cameras in your face. You know you're committed to Boise State. You got to uphold it, right? It's part of the deal. It's not. It's not cut for everybody. If you want to be this guy, you got. You got to. You know, it's like my, my dad used to say forever, man. You want to be a bear, be a grizzly. Who the hell wants to be a panda bear? Right? Be a, be, be a grizzly. So if you want to play football and you want to be, you want to play, you want to have the most success. And the most fun position to play in all of football is the quarterback. They get all the hype, they get all they get all the, the blame. This is a good group, good group of kids. They work hard. I mean, we spend a lot of time. You guys have been with us every minute of the day, you know, when we when we're working and you see how much time we're spending out here. We're 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 grinding them and but that's what you know the expectations are. It's a tough game played by tough people. Go. Five, six, breathe. Go. And that's perfect breathe. Yes, that had a chance to be really good, right? You yes, know what, what it ended up being? Second and ten. Yes, sir. Let's go. Come on. Read it from top down. And you look at that black and maroon, and you'll see the gray you know, flash open. If not, reset your feet, throw the swing. Now, look. He throws your swing, you run like you stole the ham from Crow. All right, come on. <laughs> I think there's a lot of difference tonight. I mean, not near as many sprayed around footballs. I mean, the guys are, you know, they're getting a little weird. They're, you know, they're, they're not new to them any longer, but the basics, they're, they're really getting it down. I mean, they look like a totally different bunch to me. Diva. Diva. <laughs> Ooh. Diva. That's nice. My name is Alan Wilson. I go to Tarpon Springs High School on receiver. I'm 6'1, 185. During a week like this, I would say I want to accomplish getting you know, better timing on my routes, learning how these routes fit into beating the defense. It's hard to keep training. You're right, it is grueling out here. Hot weather. Turf got my feet hot. And what I think about is, to be the best, you gotta beat the best. So if I give up out here, I'm probably gonna give up in a game, and I don't want that to happen. Yeah, I definitely have something to prove from not playing my freshman year, not really playing that much my sophomore year. 
after this spring, I guess you're right, people know of me, they'll really know who I am. So this year I got a lot to prove. It's all about taking good quality reps, you know, and a lot of it's the, you know, they feel like they got to compete with the other guys, and really you're just competing with your own self here. It's kind of like golf. You know, what those guys do, it really doesn't matter, it's what you do. Wednesday morning marks day three for the campers with two days of intense workouts completed. To the surprise of the campers, Coach Dickinson invites a special guest for the AM session, Minnesota Vikings quarterback, Rhett Bomar. Rhett was the number one quarterback recruit in America coming out of Texas when he was in high school and went to Oklahoma. And he, he's he bounced around in the league a little bit. He's in his third year, just so that they can see what one really looks like. I think they need to have a picture. I mean, hell, I'm 55 years old. You know, I can't give them that look, and I never was that quality anyway. And so. But if you can take a guy and paint him, paint him a picture and show him, hey, this is what it looks like, it gets them closer to the, you know, to what they need to need to is their goal. They know what they need to work on. It helps them. It, every, all of us need incentives to see the people that really get paid to do this. Coach Dickinson, uh, I've known him for about three years now. Um, try to work with him as much as possible in the summertime, off season. He helped me out when I was in college. You know, he made the initiative to, he invited me to a DeBartolo camp um, to be a counselor. And I appreciate that. And so we kind of struck up a relationship uh, both being, you know, we have similar backgrounds being from, you know, Oklahoma stuff and everything like that. And, um, you know, he knows what he's talking about. Um, he's put, you know, instilled a lot of things in me that I use when I go back and play. So I enjoy working with him. Do, do me a favor. Get your ball and act like you're breaking the huddle and I'll flip you the ball when you're coming to the line of scrimmage. Now, I, I know I'm not trying to embarrass you, but do it just like you would do it in a game, all right? And don't try not to strain your voice, but do it. I just go on one. You mean like change it up and do yeah, something? Yeah, just a couple times. Just right, guys break the huddle. How you direct the down play. Break the huddle. So now you're walking up to the line. All right, all right, all right four down, four down. Go 54 is the mic, 54 is the mic. Set, go wide 80. Well, oh, easy, 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 easy. 52 is the mic, 52 is the mic. Here we go, Omaha, Omaha, set. And then you can't be worried about, do I have my front shoulder open? Is my drop right? Am I, am I pointed at the target? That's all got to be automatic, right, Coach? That's exactly it's got to right. be second nature, and that's why we work it so hard. It's all mental. We're, we're working on the physical things here, and we work on the mental things uh, in the classroom. But we work on them. We've got to. You got to bring them out here to the field. And he was. I just wanted him to emphasize what you got to really do before the ball snapped. That's how how your techniques got to be so good is that you, it's just got to be second nature. And he was just just we just wanted to give him some examples of that to what there's. Uh, you know, what if there is ahead of them if they can actually get to that level. Another newcomer joining the camp is one of the most highly talented quarterbacks in the Tampa Bay area, King High School's Greg Wyndham. Coach Dickinson wasted no time in testing the senior quarterback's talents. Red 98, four down, four down. Hey, watch Mike 55, watch Mike 55. Ringo, Ringo. Set, go. Greg Wyndham, King High School, graduate 2012. I'm just learning little things, so I can't. I don't know. I don't know that much, so I'm learning every day. So uh, I think it was a good thing for me coming out here and just participating. Tons of talent, tons of talent. He's just a. There's very few things wrong with him at this point, uh, but he does have a few little mechanical things that I personally would would change a little bit, and so would his coach after talking with him. Just need to shorten his stride a little bit, but I think he's a big time talent. Last year I threw for like 1,500, and our record was seven and three. But over the years, we progressed and uh, we grew amongst us, uh, like every year. And I think we're going to be the captains of this team and just lead this team to a state championship. I'm just going through it, the recruiting process, and just see how it goes. It don't matter where I go, as long as I play college football and get my education, that's the main thing. So uh, it doesn't really matter to me. I mean, he's a cool guy. Uh, he, he knows a lot. I mean, he knows really a lot. And uh, I'm, I'm just very grateful to come out here at home and all these skills. and just very grateful to be out here. After the morning right. session, it's back to the meeting room to learn the playbook for the evening seven-on-seven seven competition. Coach D begins by offering his opinion on that subject. I think it's the most overrated drill in football. I personally think it's the most overrated drill in football. The only thing it's good for is to teach you to read defenses. Okay? What it does, what it allows you to do is go back there and get a false sense of security of what football's really like. Hey man, you know as well as I do, you guys just got snaps under your belt. 
It's unrealistic to go back there and have all the way to four and, there, and get on your spot every time and let it go, right? It don't happen. It doesn't happen. But why is it so big? Well, it's the closest thing guys can do to get some competition going. It does show a lot of things about some guys. But personally, I'm going to be honest with you, only time I, when I was coaching college football, unless we were servicing the defense, the only time I put my guys in seven on seven was in the red zone. Red zone seven on seven is pretty good because you got to be able to find alleys and throw. Okay? When you're out in the middle of the field, it's unrealistic. So, here, here's what I'm going to do, you older guys tonight, like Quinn, you guys. We're going to go out here and we're going to have plays. I'm going to have four concepts. You guys get ready and write this down because you better know. All right? It's amazing to me sometimes you guys come to these meetings and you never write a damn thing down. You all act like you got some kind of perfect memories. You know? That's a, it blows me away. It blows me away. I'm going to tell you a story. I sat in a meet six hours with John Gruden in Tampa after one of our camps. And I took 27 pages of notes for six hours, and then he was just talking about basically the same thing. It blows me away with some of you guys. But, but all of us want scholarships to Oklahoma. But here's the deal, Quinn. Josh, Bruno, you guys, VP. You have a defensive end standing up there, just like I did in that drill the other day. You know, where you come back here and you hit your spot and you got to move. One of these guys is going to rush you, and I'm not going to tell you which one. So, you're going to come back here and you're going to hit your spot. You're going to have to move as you read. I think that's closer to being football. That's how we did it in the places that I coached at. We called it nine on nine. Hell, we call it seven on seven. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. They have usually eight guys, all right? And we, we got five eligibles. How, where do we ever get seven on seven? But whoever thought of that? I mean, seriously, think about it. What, what, what called that seven on seven? I'm gonna tell you what it was, a defensive coach that can't, can't count. Did you glance up? Give me five. It was a glance. I looked up. Gosh, dang it. Nick, why are you falling over here and throwing over there? Hey, listen to me. I'm going to tell you this right in front of all these guys. You better start getting better. Because, you know, I'm telling you a lot of stuff, and you're doing the same stuff that, that you were doing three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Looking crazy out of your eyes, man, like you was in that movie, uh, Triple X or something. Good ball. You have too much talent to be around with that. Doing the same thing week after week. Me and Coach McCulley talked about that. You're too good of a kid, and your dad's too good of a man. You get your going. Right here, here we go. Let's play one. You just gonna take the hit? You're gonna take the hit? He's rushing you. You stood right there in front of him. All right. All right. Good ball. Good throw. You better move. No one blocks that guy. You better move. Tell me about it, Landon. Tell me about it. You got to move away from the pressure first. And, and then you took your eyes to the down level. All right, learn from that. Hey, we completed the pass. Go. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Never snap the ball until the wide receiver's ready. Touchdown. Good. After our five-yard penalty, you better hit a touchdown. 
There he is, G. I tell you one thing, there ain't nobody reason any better than you, cuz. Grady Sullivan, South Lake Carroll, in Texas, and I'm gonna be a freshman. I hope I can be able to play on varsity and help my or contribute to win a state championship. I'll be honest with you, I don't think there's a better freshman quarterback. I think there's guys that can throw the ball probably a little harder, throw it a little further, and maybe run around a little faster, but he reads defenses better than any freshman in America, and he gets the ball. I mean, he's excellent. He, he continues just to blow me away how good he is as a freshman. Uh, I just wanna learn uh, new drills and how to get better. Sorry, right, I dropped one like that when I was about 13. Ain't no problem. Ain't no problem. <laughs> Now that looks like a big time football player. Not only that, man, it was just it was just in there right on the spot too. You know, there was no stress on him. Now go play defense. <laughs> That's good. You should have be a, have a rested arm from today. Unless you threw a million balls in whatever you did. We're gonna we're gonna get after it in the morning now. Okay, y'all ready? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. DSU on three, one, two, three. DSU. As the week nears its end, the rigors of the camp begin to grind on the athletes as they enter their final evening workout. All Coach Dickinson can hope is that the quarterbacks prove why they are some of the best in the country. That's oh, wanting to play pretty damn bad right there. So we'll just, we'll just get strong. Go. Oh. Hey man, when they, when they put the pads on your ass and your mama starts crying up in the top, you'll know you forgot to move on the rush. Because if you didn't see him, he saw you. Ready. If the corner's in front of the out, then you should have been throwing the post. The post. Without a doubt. I mean, that's that's serious to do. You're reading, corner's in front of the out, but I'm going to throw the post. It's a skinny. All right? Been around this game a long time. And, uh, you know, it gives me, it kind of gives me a chance. I've gotten out of coaching to become a superintendent, you know, so I, I and I still coach on the side, but not full time. And this gives me a chance to, and my wife understands that. It gives me a chance to do the things that, that have driven me for a long, long time. One, two, three. Again, I'm going to walk back up. The spacing's there. It's not up here in his neck, it's not in his ear. The point of the ball is down. Now, I know you guys haven't got to go with the big guys very much, but he'll throw it as good as anybody that you'll see in the nation this year. He's just a midget, and we're trying to make him grow, but he, well, he'll spin that darn thing. I've been a high school coach my whole career. You know, I wasn't a college guy, I wasn't a pro guy. I coached college for two years, and, and I found my niche coaching young kids. So when I had an opportunity to come and help with the younger kids uh, uh, when you get in big groups like this, that, and then I think I have a lot to offer as far as the total game. You know, I, I coach every position, so I can help the receivers, I can help different people, and I think that helps the, the company, you know, succeed. You lie. You lie. Come on, let me have you. Let me have you. Down and up. Down and up. Down and up. You lie. There you go. Oh, that's much better. There's no tension. Now do it. All right, control it. The evolution of it over the last few years, going from just going to colleges, having camps, to more of these individual position camps is really, really fun. It's really nice. Being in the education business, I kind of relate it to how early we're teaching algebra. You know, in third grade now, we're teaching algebra. When we got seven, sixth and seventh graders out here that we're teaching to become elite quarterbacks, not just guys that play, and, and we treat them all the same. You know, you gear it down, but you're teaching them the same things that you're teaching Rhett Bromar, who plays the NFL, to a seventh grader from Nashville, Tennessee. So watch, it's really exciting. Get over there, get over there, get over there, get over there, get out! 
See the velocity on that ball? Nice. Now follow through. Don't be high on me. Now don't be high on me. These guys are here to become great quarterbacks. So, you, I'm, in my opinion, I cheat them if I don't teach them and I don't demand them to learn. And again, I, I, I reflect a lot to my education background. I send kids from my school to summer camps in science and math. You know, well, they don't go there to play games. They go there to learn science and math. Well, that's the way I look at these guys. They've invested money and time to be coached. And it's my opinion that they deserve me to coach them, not just to tell them it's all good. Hey, you're just a kid. Now, again, you those 11 and 12, 13 year olds, that's, that's one thing. But those 17, 18, 19 year olds that are going to go on to the next level, man, it's a market, the next level. Work to them. Stay a little taller. Stay a little taller. The crowd. One, two, three. Short step. There it is. That thing will be that high. Hey, man, I'm not a genius, but I'm pretty smart, aren't I? Because I, when, as soon as you throw, what did I say before I ever saw the ball? I said, there it is right there, did I not? Uh -huh. uh, the older kids that have been with us three or four years, I mean, they're just, they're really great kids with great families, and, and uh, they, it, it's really obvious, that, like you said, be out here for two or three days, and you're saying, boy, these kids are good kids, they're different kids, they, they, they're caring, and, and, and that's what makes it so much fun. After a long, grueling week, it's the final day of the Elite Quarterback Camp. Time for the campers to get in their final one-on-one -on -one sessions with Coach Dickinson. You got to be able to make the basic throws. You got to hold the ball right. You got to drop correctly. You got to have your eyes in the right spot. Then you got to you got to execute the plan. And when you do that, you move on to a higher level plan. Just remember those things: hand down the middle of the ball, hey, not listen to the radio. It's right here. Don't like because all it does is cause tension. And just keep throwing basic throws. Every time y'all come, y'all get better. Balance, rhythm, tempo, eyes. Calm your eyes is what I call it. Focus them, calm them. Make this basic throw every time, drop down. You gotta quit looking up at the ball, Ronnie. You're gonna throw a million balls in your lifetime, maybe two million, why would look at every one of them, right? I don't care what that ball looked like getting to there. I don't care if it gets there. This, the spin is, hey, that's just, hey, that's just, uh, you know, cheese on the burger. All right. Yeah, we want it to spin, and we don't want any wobble, but we want it accurate. Like Joe Montana said, he didn't throw a spiral; he threw a tight wobble. Just the best that's ever played. Good, good. You throw that efficient of that ball every time at Youngstown, you'll, you'll, you'll be their quarterback. Make the right reads, know where to go with the ball, you'll be their quarterback. You're throwing catchable balls, the ball's easy. There, there, there we go. I like that quarterback. I think you're gonna be a really talented player, all right? That's why I'm the reason I wanted to put pressure on you a little bit. Can, can you handle the pressure? Because you know you kind of got a little wound up. He started out here early. You were pretty, you know, you're pretty good. I wanted to see you throw good, accurate balls. I want to see you get in good rhythm and tempo. This is a long journey, man. You're my guy. All right, keep working. Last one. Hey, let's, let's make this one one you want to go all the way on to Kansas on, right? Let it be the gas that gets you to Kansas. That's it too. That's a good one. That might be the best one he's thrown all day. Write your name with your left hand. What does it look like? Practice it about 5,000 times and see what it looks like. So what does that tell you? Practice. It's all about the effort we put in on it. All right? It's going to be good. Take care of that arm. Treat that arm like it's the only one you got. You know why? Because it is. Because it is. There it is. There it is. See, you got things going at the right target. Let it come out of your hand. Don't fight it. Don't overthink it. You know, you let your athletic ability take over and let it happen. So you got skills. You're an, you're an athletic kid. It's just what you want to do with it. Depends on how bad you want to do it. And that's how I would gauge about how I would do it. If I wanted to do it, I'd do it. If I don't, if I didn't, I'd be the free safety it, it needs, just like you're going to be. Seriously. This is how you got to look when people come watch you throw, man, scouts and stuff, you know, from schools. You got, you got to throw with this kind of confidence and balance and rhythm. I like it. I like it. 
pick the tempo of your drop and the pace of your drop up just a little bit. More game speed in the drop, but not out of control. Hey, it's 55 mile speed limit zone. Let's go 55, you know? Just don't go 45 and just don't go 65. That's what Bomar does. He goes 65 and a 55. He knows it. Not bad, Bruno. Tell me about your academics. How's that going? Good. You got your ACT or SAT, whatever? What do you got on it? Yeah, it's just the SAT. What? Uh, I need to loan you some points. Yeah. <laughs> huh? No, nah, I'm waiting for my score. I think they might have came in this weekend. All right. Well, you look good, man. You got my number. You called me before. Let me know if I can help you. Thank you. You look good. See how easy that is right there? Yeah. Smalls. We ain't sending anybody to the moon now, damn. Good. First of the week, I was like, what is wrong with this damn kid? He's not doing what we're telling him to do. You just kept taking the same. You got in a hurry from the lines or what? What was it? I'm not sure. All right, well, good. At least you didn't make up some damn excuse. All right, come on. See, that's easy. Let it go. That's a big time throw. That's a big time throw. Now here's the deal. Do that. Don't be the that jumps out of the side, gets in a hurry, gets his feet way out from running. This is that simple. Focus, balance, rhythm, tempo, play under control, but play quick. Yeah, that looks good right there. Made all the big time throws, and you're you know you're going to be a sophomore in high school. You'll get more on it as you go, but that, that's pretty good because you were under control. Okay. Your feet weren't all going all different directions. You weren't hopping one di different direction. A lot of lines going right at the right spots. Not much wrong there. It's pretty good. Don't get your chest down. We're not trying to overthrow. We've got to finish with our chest high. Okay. Shoot that Tom Brady third shot with that right peck. Not bad, but you throw, and you just let this relax. Don't crank it. Yes, sir. Don't crank it down here. Don't I'm tension not, up. I'm not trying to do it. No, no, I know, but that's where that's where this paint's coming in. Yes, sir. Good. Good. Go home. There's some kids that's really wanting to do something in the, in, you know, in the football business. And some of these kids are right on the, numerous one of these kids are right on the verge of getting Division I offers. Some of these kids are, you know, playing eighth grade All-American games, seventh grade All-American games, the MVPs. This is a special camp. Seems like just a few minutes ago it was Sunday night, you know, we we're having a little meeting and it uh, flies by fast. You know, we had 10 really good workouts and it really does fly fast. You know, coming in, uh, you kind of don't know unless you've been here before, you know, what to expect or how the coaches act or how they how they teach their approach on things. But, you know, after being here for a while, it's it's something different. It really is. It's something, you know, if you if you buy into it, you can really benefit a lot. Oh, it was awesome. It was a great experience. and. Uh, um, great chance to learn and get better with and compete with other guys. Well, it was a real fun week. We uh, all worked, came out here and worked hard. We got a lot better. We did a lot of great drills and that probably helped us a ton. That helped us a lot. Every time I come out here, it's just a great experience and I always get better and I feel that every time I go back to Wichita and work with my team, I feel that I've learned just everything and I kind of just kind of tweak up all my skills and that stuff. So I just feel that I've become more all around, well-rounded, better player. The instruction's really good, and uh, it's just a great environment here in Florida. You know, it's a little hot, but it's just can't be. It. I mean, it's awesome to get NFL players, turf. You know, both coaches, so it's a really great experience. I learned a lot about, like, as well as the technique, but also about the game and the strategies. The seven on seven is great. Uh, I get to throw against a really good defense, and I have really good receivers, and it's a great experience. Well, we learned to keep our shoulder open, and that I was overstriding. Keep your eyes up. 
short enough to shred. One on one time is always good, and he's one on one on one. He's always there to tell me exactly what I'm doing right, and exactly what I'm doing wrong. So it's a big help. I'm just kind of come out and show that I can compete with kids from different states who go to uh, public schools and that private school kids are still good at football. Coach D has taught me a lot of things that I've never known before, and he's helping me learn to, to be a better quarterback. It was good. Got me uh, motivated last time to show him what I got. Oh, it's been an amazing experience getting to work with some of the best coaches in the country. Definitely all the instruction from the coaches, great coaching, uh, just being with the other guys and picking up stuff from them. It's a lot of knowledge out here. I just tried to uh, absorb it. This year I came back and um, he said I got a lot better, like pretty much twice as good as I was when I got here. This is my fourth camp and uh, you know I enjoy it. every time I come here. I get better and better. I've never been to a camp with so many great quarterbacks before, so it's fun. The, m the most important thing is to be a good quarterback. You can be a good quarterback on your high school team, be the best quarterback in your city, be the best quarterback in your state. And, and set goals that you can do that in. And I think from there, you gotta get out in front of these college coaches and so that they'll know who you are. It's out of sight, out of mind. And to let you, so and make sure that you're not one that doesn't get discovered. I'm just very grateful to come out here at home and all these skills and just very grateful to be out here. The main part this week that I thought was getting over, getting over the next play. Our, our motto is next play and even if I have a bad throw with the first one, I need to step it up the next one. It's definitely helped me out a lot too, route running and whatnot, and how to run my routes and stuff like that. It was a cool experience to see people from all around the nation, uh, trying to see the made new friends, competition obviously, but I I'm, I'm definitely took something out of it. I want them to leave camp with something. I want them to leave camp feeling that, hey, I can really do this. I want their confidence level up. I want them to feel confident that they got a lot out of it and that they can make all the throws that they're, being, they're going to be asked to do. And I show them that they can do it if they just slow down, get the right tempo and the right pace, and they can do it.